how to get to Hades Town. Well, I think Piccadilly Circus is probably the closest tube station. You could also go from Leicester Square. Personally, I think it's worth a slightly longer walk from the Dean Street exit of Tottenham Court Road, if only to have a nicer travel experience on the Elizabeth Line. Oh my god, hey, welcome back to my theatre-themed YouTube channel. My name is Mickey Joe, and I am obsessed with all things theatre. If you've met me before, you know that already. If you haven't met me, I am a theatre critic based here in the UK, and also a social media content creator. This is my stage YouTube channel where I review shows that I get invited to go and see and I talk about theatre news and today we're going to be talking all about the West End arrival of Hades Town. Hades Town, the Tony Award winning musical still running on Broadway at the Walter Kerr Theatre. It has just started previews at London's Lyric Theatre but this is not the first time it's been seen in the UK. It had a little stint at the National Theatre. I saw it there, I did not love the show. I later went to go and give it a second chance at the Walter Kerr on Broadway way and it made so much more sense there and things had been improved and just like slightly changed about the show and it was so much more atmospheric in that venue. The takeaway from which is that the venue in which you see a musical can have a significant bearing on its success and on your enjoyment of it. All of which was playing on my mind when I went to go and see the very first preview performance of Town last weekend. Yes, I was lucky enough to get to be part of the very first preview audience. Here's what happened. is tickets went on sale and we were like, we'll see it around its opening and I'll go in a press capacity and I'll go and review. And then as first preview loomed, we found ourselves, my fiance Aaron and I, who is a big Hades Town fan, we found ourselves getting jealous of everyone who was going to get to go and see the first preview. And it's been a long time since I've done a first preview in the West End, maybe not since like Dear Evan Hansen. And so when a pair of reasonably expensive tickets popped up in the stalls, we had to buy them. And I'm so glad that we did because there was so much to see, there was so much to talk about, and it was a truly electric night of theater. Now, whenever a popular musical like this transfers, people are always bound to have a lot of questions. There's a lot that I didn't know about this production until I walked into the Lyric Theatre on Saturday night. And while I will not be reviewing the show or talking about what I thought of like the performances and the material until its official opening, I am going back on press night and I will be posting a full review video here on my channel after that. Make sure you're subscribed and you have the notifications turned on so you don't miss it. Today's video is going to be answering your questions because I put a question box on my Instagram, also at Mickey Joe Theatre if you want to be involved next time I do one of these, asking what people want to know about the first preview of Hades Town, and today we're going to be answering those questions. I was just about to triumphantly pick up my phone upside down. <laughs> it's very late, you guys. Okay, the story has disappeared, but I can still find it on like archive and notifications. I've got this. While I'm finding this, if you enjoy today's video um, and you want to know more about Hades Town, other West End, and Broadway shows, make sure to subscribe to my theatre themed YouTube channel. And if you have any other questions about Hades Town or anything else really, comment down below and I will do my best to answer. Or perhaps someone else in the comment section will also be able to answer your question for you. I can't find these questions. This is going to be a very short video if this doesn't work. Okay, here we go. Oh, there's more questions than I remember. So first of all, 135050 said vlog, question mark, question mark, question mark. And I did have my camera with me and I did manage to get a little bit of footage.
So that was the show's first preview curtain call, which I'm hoping gives you a sense of the energy and the enthusiasm in that audience. You also got to see what the costumes look like. If there was any confusion, I don't think the costumes were ready in time for the filming of the promotional video and photos that's currently being used on social media and outside the theater. So they kind of have like imitation versions. It's like they're cosplaying their own characters, basically. But the actual costumes that we're seeing on stage are essentially replicas of the Broadway production. Now, at the end of the show's curtain call is a final song sung by the cast, and it's called We Raise Our Cups. And on Broadway, this is not allowed to be filmed, but they do allow the audience to film this, or they don't prevent the audience filming on, like, special occasions. So, like, a cast member's first show, or someone's last show or like a cast change like special nights at Hades Town. And the first preview obviously was an example of one of those. So lots of people were filming and were not stopped from filming. I haven't had a chance to inquire fully and find out what the protocol is going to be. I will do my best to answer this, but I would suggest if anyone is wanting to do this, inquire with ushers upon entry to the theater or at some point during your visits. The thing about the Lyric Theater and with many Western theaters compared to Broadway is we don't have as many aisles. So the rows going across in the stalls are so long. And if someone was filming in the middle of the stalls, in the middle of one of those rows, there is no way that an usher could get to them to even convey the message to get them to stop. Short of like throwing a paper airplane, which is not encouraged professional conduct. You're also more often likely to be allowed to film the bows of a West End show versus a Broadway show because Broadway where they often have uh, issues and technicalities involving the musicians union. For example, you can film the Mega Six in London, you can't film it in New York. And as a final thought on that, I am hoping that they will let London audiences film We Raise Our Cups throughout the run because I think the show is going to need to benefit from that kind of marketing exposure here. Because if it is going to be able to sustain a long run, it's going to need a few things. And one of those things is for more people to become aware of it other than the core fans. Speaking of which, here is my footage of We Raise Our Cups. Pour the wine and raise a cup. Drink up, brothers, you know how. And spill a drop for Orpheus, wherever he is now. Let all our Now, speaking of cups, seamless transition. Let's talk about merchandise. Michelle MC483 replied, tell me about the merch. And here is all of the information I was able to find out on the night. We are currently queuing for merchandise. I would not anticipate the merch queue normally being as long as it is tonight, but like people are here dressed up as Hades Sapphires. These are the people who are gonna wanna buy merch and a lot of it. You can see the prices of all of the merch items here. The merch desk, which is a very lovely floral, can be found in the immediate foyer area as soon as you come in off of the street if you're coming in for the stalls. I'm going to show you as much merchandise as I can. We have a Hades Town London t-shirt here. We have magnets and a key ring. That is a pullover that says it's an old song and we're going to sing it again. There is uh, the original Broadway cast recording in various forms. We have tote bags, we have mugs, we have the same t-shirts. Again, we have a fan over there. You can see, okay, so there is the pins. I'm going to show you the pins. The pins are here. Look at those. That's a closer look at the mugs. So you saw everything at the merch desk and the prices there as well. I am wearing the pullover in a small. It's a unisex small, so it's still, it's not like tight fitting on me. It's got Hades Town. Um, the myth, the musical there on the sleeve. It's really good quality in terms of how that's been printed. It's nice and 3D. Uh, we've got obviously the logo here. Um, it says, it's an old song. 
And we're going to sing it again. The Hadestown beanie I'm currently wearing is not on sale at the moment at Hadestown London. I got this in New York. And the bear you're seeing behind me is not official Hadestown merch. That's a bear you can get at the National Theatre. And I tied a red bandana around his neck because I thought it was cute. We did get some other bits and pieces, though. This merch desk saw Aaron coming. We got the program. I expect we'll get another one of these on press night. One of the great things about this show is this colour scheme is just so aesthetic and the programme looks gorgeous. We have all the lovely cast bios and the understudy information as well. For example, Madeleine Charlemagne is a fate but is also understudy for Eurydice. We also got this little key ring here that I'm hoping you can see. And we got the pin set. I showed you these in the video, but there they are for Aaron's pin collection. And one last thing I want to show you that we got at the merchandise desk is these. The merch desk is also where you can get loyalty cards stamped. More on these later. So these are like Hadestown loyalty cards, which is a really exciting scheme. Let me tell you a little bit more about this or as much as I know so far. So they have spaces for 12 different stamps. The stamps are dated, which is presumably how they keep track of uh, people not abusing the system. And uh, when you get your sixth stamp for seeing the show on six separate occasions, you get a badge, presumably an exclusive badge. I don't know whether it's different to the first preview ones that we got given at the end. Here are the first preview badges. I'm gonna grab one, thank you so much. <laughs> this is what they look like. There you go. West End premiere, Feb 2024. And then at 12, you get a signed poster. Now, various people asked about differences between the West End and the Broadway production. Timothy Deves asked this, and I am Harry underscore asked this. And one of the biggest differences I want to tell you about to begin with is that the cast in the West End use their own natural accents. In fact, this happens on Broadway as well, but because the show has only really had American principal cast members until now, people haven't really noticed. But this, much like Six, seems to be a show where whoever is cast in the roles will use their own accent for the character. This is the cast board here. You can find this immediately in the foyer area. This is the production and company for this performance of Hades Town. We're anticipating the full cast, given that this is the first preview performance. We have Donald Finn, Grace Hodgett Young, Zachary James, Melanie Labarry, Gloria Nitri, Bella Brown, Maddie Charlemagne, Ali Daniel, and the ensemble and swings and the band as well. Oh, you gotta be quick to get everyone. So in the West End, we have Grace Hodgett Young using a Northern accent. I believe she's from Nottingham originally. Our Orpheus Donnell Finn is Irish, so he has an Irish accent. The Fates, I believe, all have English accents. You don't get to hear them talk that much, so it's harder to discern. Zachary James, who plays Hades, has an American accent, so it sounds a little more like the cast recording. Melanie LeBarry, who is our Hermes, has a Trinidadian accent. And a lot of people were asking whether that still worked. We have questions on here saying, how was it in British accents? Someone said, how was Irish Orpheus? Someone said, are they singing in their own accents or American? Someone else said, does it work not using American accents? I think it works. I don't think there's anything specifically that feels as though it needs to be an American accent. Obviously it's not set in the US. And it's based obviously on a Greek myth. If you've come this far in the video and you don't know about Hades Town, it's based on the Greek myth of Orpheus and Eurydice and also involves the characters of Hades and Persephone and Hermes and the Fates. But they're also not using Greek accents because the whole thing is kind of timeless and the music has a more contemporary feel. So it's a little bit anachronistic, but I think using their own accents really works. And without stepping too much into reviewing, I think it conveys a passion very well well. I think Donal in particular with his Irish voice, it has a lovely lilt to it. And I think them using their own voices conveys more of an honesty than if they were trying to do the whole thing through the slightly artificial filter of an American accent. And because it sounds different enough to the cast recording that you may be used to, the whole thing feels fresh while still feeling like Hades Town. So it works and it brings new qualities to the score at the same time. Now there are a few more differences from the Broadway production. If you want to know about all of the differences, then my friend Ashley Hufford, you can find her on Instagram, also over on TikTok, has made a whole deep dive breakdown about many, 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 many differences. You can see standing up official Hades Town historian, documentary maker, 
live checker, Ashley Hufford. Would it be Hades Town first preview if she wasn't here? Answer, no. What's happening here is the American Hades Town super fans who have seen the show maybe hundreds of times between them are making notes about the differences in the London production. We're talking like tiny moments between characters on stage and like which of the fates wears gloves and little like choreography differences, things that were brought in from the tour, things that were kept from Broadway. Go and check out all of her content about that. That's Ashley Hufford. But I will happily tell you about some of the more noticeable stuff as someone who's seen the show now three times. And as a few people have asked about here, there was a new verse at the end of the song Epic 3. Now, without getting back on my Hades Town soapbox and once again telling you that I think the pre-Broadway version of Epic 3 is the best version of the song that we've had, I will happily tell you that this is a song in particular that writer Aeneas Mitchell has really been developing and changing a lot over the show's history. And it seems that in between the show's Broadway and West End runs, she has tinkered once more with the end of the song Epic 3. This verse comes right at the end of the song. I'm not going to quote it for you here word for word. You have that to look forward to when you go and see the show for yourself, but it invokes the idea of Hades having power and riches, but beneath that having the same loneliness that Orpheus has known, and because of that he is as much a poor boy as Orpheus is. It draws the parallel between the two of them, which I think is very powerful in that moment, and connects Hades not only to Persephone, which is what that song does, but also connects Hades to Orpheus, and that ultimately is what motivates him to make the decision that he does. I think so anyway. And I do think that that Epic 3 verse is better than the Epic 3 verse that it replaced, but I also think the old Epic 3 is better than either of them. I'm sorry, Aeneas, I know you like this one more, I just liked that one. Some of the other little changes, one of the most unique things about the London production is the character of Hermes. So originally this was played, um, I say originally, in the original Broadway production by Andre de Shields. He was then replaced by Lilius White. It's a role that can be played by performers of all genders. And so when Lilius went into the role, pronouns were changed and the costume was adapted to give it a more feminine style. But Melanie LeBarry plays the role of Hermes without gendered pronouns, which is interesting. She also has understudies in the role of various different genders, so possibly that's the reason why. And her version of the costume bears a closer similarity to Andre de Shields than to Lilius White. Melanie also has a pocket watch prop, which was used thematically throughout the show. Again, my friends from America who have seen the show many times pointed this out to me. I'm going to be watching that very carefully on press night. Now, if you're curious, the stage door for the Lyric Theatre can be found on Great Windmill Street, round the side. And there's a big old crowd here. It's sometime after the show. But there it is, the Lyric Theatre stage door. Slightly less organised here in the UK than in the US. Theatrical Lydia said, is it worth reading up on the synopsis before the show or is it one you can go in blind to? Help me out in the comments on this one because I'm inclined to say go in blind. I don't think you need to read up on the synopsis. And if you do, maybe just an overview of like Hades and Persephone's mythological backstory, but not Orpheus and Eurydice, because Hades and Persephone is kind of like, that's already happened by the time we get into this show, and it's talked about, but not fully explained, or if it is, it's done kind of ornately in song, and it's not the clearest thing in the world. A lot of the show is sung rather than spoken, but I feel like Lydia will have a more impactful and emotive experience going to see it without having first read up on the plot, but comment down below. Well, we can do a, we can do a poll in the comments section. What do you think? Do you think someone who doesn't know this show should go in blind for the first time or should find out more about it? Now, while we are talking about whether or not it's a replica from Broadway, someone asked a very good specific question saying, did they have a center lift for the ending or the tour's back elevator? Because this is a set piece that they did have at the National Theatre that they do have on Broadway that has been changed for the tour because obviously the tour in the US is visiting lots of different theatres which will have different capabilities. And I am very happy to tell you it's the same as the Broadway version. They have the central elevator. It goes down, it goes up, it does all of the same things. I don't want to tell you too many spoilers, but it's really cool. It's the same as the National Theatre version, if not quite as extreme. Or honestly, maybe it is. I don't know, but I was sat stalls level for this, and I was sat up at the top at the National so I could see just how far and just how fast, and that seemed to be more of each. Now, while I'm talking about where I am sat, some people have asked this question as well. Someone said, I'm never going to make it there from Australia, but for those who will, what's the leg room like? And someone else asked for 
um, what the view was like from different parts of the uh, theater. Obviously, I've only sat in one place so far, but here is the view from my seat. <laughs> Okay, so we're here in our seats in the stalls of the Lyric Theatre. We're in N5 and 6. At this point in the stalls, the rake gets a little bit better. Further forwards, there's less of a rake, so it might even be worth considering sitting a little further back for Hades Town. There, I've said it. Um, the overhang kind of starts just there. For much of it, it starts at N with us, actually, so my view is completely unobstructed, which is lovely, because this is a tall set. Um, and you can see the set of Hades Town. We will know more by the end of the performance about similarities with the Broadway production. But for now, there it is on the stage of the Lyric Theatre. Boy, is there an excitement in the air this evening. Okay, when I pan up, there are going to be spoilers if you haven't seen the show in terms of what happens to the set during the first act. Here it is. This is the set reveal at the end of Act 1 and for Act 2 on the stage of the Lyric Theatre, as well as a member of the stage management team playing with a microphone. He's not part of the show. I mean, he is part of the show, but he's not He's not in the show. Now, the Lyric Theatre is not one of my favourites in the West End, I have to say. In particular, there are parts of the circle that just feel very cramped in terms of leg room. I'm 5 foot 11-ish, but I have quite long legs. And also, I've sat nearish the front before and thought that the rake was a little bit disappointing. However, if you're in the very front few rows, and I believe it starts at row B, B being the front row for this production, then you're looking up, not crazy up, but up enough that the heads in front of you won't be a problem. I, I have a feeling, without quantifying this, probably between E and like H, is where you're going to find there's not as much of a rake as you would like. If you're a tall person, then this isn't a problem for you. It's just a problem for the person sat behind you. But I was in row N, which sounds very far back. And it's not, the rake was really good from there. I would also advise, and I think this is a pro tip for many West End shows, honestly, rather than sitting in the dead center of a row, go a little bit to one side because a diagonal view line is bound to be able to get through more heads than just looking straight in front. If you're like center and you're just looking forwards and there's a head in front of you, you're going to have to do this. Whereas if you're diagonal, you can position yourself in different ways. I would avoid going too far to the very sides of the stool, specifically if you're more than halfway back. But if you're particularly worried about a view, go and check out seatplan.com and check out the listing for the Lyric Theatre, but the West End Lyric Theatre, not the Broadway one. They will have uh, views that people have taken from their seats for this and previous productions. The stagey page asks, do I think much will change in previews? I don't know. I think performances may adapt and be honed. Gloria being uh, the only member of the cast, or Gloria and Beth in the ensemble, I should say, being the only members of the cast who have done this show before because they were in the National Theatre production. For everyone else, because of the nature of this show, I think things might change, and there's a lot of freedom to add in little moments and to find new nuances and details within those characters. It's not a very regimented kind of a show. It's 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 a little more organic. Jessica Rachel asked, would I recommend seeing it? And again, this is not my review, but I do think that this is definitely worth seeing. I mean, it was a Tony Award winning musical. That is a mark of quality in and of itself. It has a huge fan following, another mark of quality, but also it's quite unique. There aren't a lot of musicals like this, either that adapt this kind of a story or have this kind of a sound. Speaking of which, I want to talk about the voices because All Ears Quincy asked one of my favorite questions and said, I love when this show has more unique vocal performances. How does the London cast hold up? Shout out to Quincy and the All Ears team on YouTube, by the way, literally my favorite YouTube channel to watch with my fiance, Aaron. And right after I finish filming this video, we're about to watch another one of their Disney World Challenge videos. But to answer the question, we definitely still have unique vocal performances in this cast. We not only have the accent thing and how that makes everything sound very fresh and very different. Someone else asked if Hades is a true bass and he is. He is hitting the Patrick Page low notes because I know not every subsequent Hades has, but Zachary is. He is a celebrated operatic bass. But Donal sounds very unlike Reeve Carney. He has a really uniquely expressive voice, I think. Grace has the belting power, but also 
has a really interesting mix that she uses for a lot of the show. And again, sounds really different to Eva and different to like what I've heard of Saleya. Melanie, completely unique voice as Hermes. I think our fates have really interesting voices. And I agree completely with Quincy. That's one of the things that makes this show really interesting. Now, a lot of these questions are gonna get answered when I review it. Someone said, is it good? Someone said, how good is Grace? Someone said, tell us about Miss Grace. On a scale of outstanding to incredible, how were the performances? How are the musicians? I mean, the musicians are, are fantastic. I will tell you that for free. Now, someone said, are the band on stage? And they are, they get a really big feature in the show at the start of the second act. And then also again at the end, please stay for the band to finish playing at the end of the show because they deserve the applause. And it's a, it's a really great feature of them right at the end after the bows. <laughs> Queen said, is it a good match for the theatre it's in? And it did a lot to convince me that it was. Like I said before, I didn't love the Lyric Theatre, and this was not the first place I thought of for Hadestown when they announced a West End return. I assumed it might go to the Noel Coward. And there are still things about the Lyric Theatre's like entrance foyer and layout that I don't love, and parts of its seating that I don't love. I really like the way they've transformed the downstairs bar space. <laughs> At the back of the stalls is this bar. They do also have merchandise. As far as I've been able to tell so far, we have no specific themed drinks, though they do have specialty cocktails for the venue, the Lyric Theatre cocktails. This being a British theatre, we are serving them in glass. Uh, and it's very red is the reason I'm showing you. Very Hades Town appropriate. But also the way that the set fits on that stage and the height of it and the scale of it, I think has done a lot to convince me that it is, it is a good fit in this theatre. I would be very interested to see it from different parts of the theatre and see if I still feel the same way. Finally, Mike Flynn commented, make me want to go and see it. And I will tell you again, without reviewing the show, that is going to come after press night when I go and see the show again. But it is not only an award-winning piece of theatre, it is not only a completely unique piece of theatre, it does something really interesting, which is it takes this incredibly old, ancient story, it finds what is compelling and relevant and contemporary and timeless about it, and it uses this delicious modern score that takes like New Orleans jazz and folk and acoustic elements and enough of a musical theater sound to make it theatrical and brilliant lyrics in order to connect to a really broad and a really diverse audience, which is another thing I actually noted on the night. Do you know what I enjoy about the Hades Town fandom? Is I feel like you can recognize a lot of other groups of fans and like relate them to their shows. Yeah. And there's a diversity in the room. Yeah. International as well. I there's so many people this evening who are here from completely different places. But I think that's cool. But for now, I think that is everything I can tell you about the first preview of Hades Town in London. If you want to know more about this show, stay tuned. Make sure you're subscribed to my theatre-themed YouTube channel with the notifications turned on. If you have already seen Hades Town in London, comment down below, tell us more, answer any questions anyone might have. And I look forward to letting you know my full thoughts about the show and this West End cast when I go and see it in less than two weeks for press night. I am so excited. I hope I can get my ticket stamped again. I want a badge, damn it. But until then, I hope that everyone is staying safe and that you have a stagey day. For 10 more seconds, I'm Mickey Joe Theatre. Oh my God, hey. Thanks for watching. Have a stagey day. Subscribe. <laughs>